Um, we want to go ahead and write some C++ code. Um, we wanted it to have the command line arguments. Uh, so for example, we could do a P minus seven. Number one, we have to have command line arguments to tell the program how many children uh, to process. So as it turns out, there's about 24 things I was looking for on this uh, homework. That was one of them. If you did not get the command line arguments, pull them in, convert that to a number, if you had it hard coded, then that was one of the points we counted off for. All right. So then you need to, going to need to keep track of the PIDs of all the children. And the easiest way to do that is an array. If you did not allocate an array, store the PIDs and print them out, that was a point. If you didn't dynamically create your array and free it up, that was a point. Now, you need two functions, a parent function and a child function. I meant that. I really wanted a parent function and a child function. A lot of y'all have the parent and the child just in your main as an if greater than zero, else. Um, as programmers, your customer is going to come to you and say, hey, I want this, this, and this. All right? If you don't give them this, this, and this, if you give them this other thing, they're not going to like it. They're not going to hire you. So when I give you instructions, probably going to be pretty particular about it. Now, are you ever going to have a customer that comes up and says, oh, I want this, this, and this, and it's completely unreasonable? Yeah. Or maybe they say, I want this, this, and this, and you look at that and you're like, I could do that, but that's sort of silly. You know, if you just do this other thing, it would be much, much better. If you just do the other thing without asking them, do you think they're going to be happy about it? What do you need to do? Ask them. Ask them. Go ask and say, hey. I know you, you know, the department said I want this, this, and this, but having looked at it and done the analysis, I see this other option. Would you like this? And I said, I want you to go, oh wow, that's much better. Yes, do that. Or maybe we'll go, well, yeah, as a computer scientist, you might think that's better, but as a businessman, I have the domain knowledge. I know what I really, really need, and I really, really need this, this, and this. Okay. So if you did not need the two functions, you got to point off. All right, the children should be through the county loop. They should print out the PID. That's two more points. Parent function needs to wait until all the children are done. If you didn't do the wait, there's a point off. OK, parent process should be the only one to spawn children. If you didn't have your you know, PID greater than zero uh, code in the right place, if you generated too many children, um, or if you let the children generate other children, you got a point off. Um, and do you recall the book of function variables? Again, just say, you know, if PID is greater than zero, uh, call parent, else call child. All right. It also said you need to follow the coding standards. There you look at the coding standard document. Okay. So it basically said, hey, you have to have comments. Uh, name, class, date, blah, blah, blah. You didn't, you got a point off. It also said, what did it say? Somewhere here, it said every function, hey, there you go. Every function should have a one or two line explanation of the function. Okay? Hey, this is the function that, you know, counts to 10 and prints out PIDs. This is the function that creates X many children, and or whatever. You have to have that code because somebody else is going to come along and they're going to go, "What in the world are you doing here? What the fourth was this?" You know. Um, I really do require a function. I mean, you don't have to do paragraphs long, you know, comments, right? But at least a one-liner. Now. This is my parent function. I'm sorry. Especially when the function is called parent. That's self-evident. 
you just wasted a line. I mean, saying this is my function. When the name of the function is right there, you should be using uh, self-documenting function names anyway, right? So that doesn't count. You know, if you put this is my, you know, and we'll see an example in a second. I mark off for that. Uh, okay, something all of this copy the sample um, input, and that's okay. It would be nice if you screenshotted your actual output, but whatever. Um, I don't think I'm marked off for that, but maybe next time, give me a screenshot of your output. Uh, okay, I said on your lab report, and you had to add the lab report, that was part of it. You needed the title page, you needed the theory section, you needed this, that, and the other, right? The inputs, the outputs. You needed to put all those sections in before you took stuff off. If you didn't have a title page, that was a one off. If you didn't, on the theory section, actually had to explain how is the process different from our program? You know, what is it for? What is the clone process, okay? Or I mean, um, why is it useful to, to spawn or to clone? Um, so for each one of those, it was a point. Now, we're doing the same format for homework two. And the, in the theory section, it's going to be talking about pipes and things. Make sure you answer the questions. Most people did. But just in case, a couple of people did. Uh, all right. So this was basically, I mean, part of the thing was you have to, parent has to wait until the children are done. And this was the clue. This is how you do a wait, OK? Um, there was one of the things was, how do you pull in uh, comments? I mean, uh, uh, command line arguments. And one of the things is when you pull it in, you pull it in as a string. In order to get it to a number, we have to use the uh, string to integer, STOI uh, function. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So I went ahead and I pulled in somebody's code. I didn't get a chance to ask you ahead of time, so I redacted your name, but I hope you don't mind. All right, so this particular one person, um, they put the comments up there, that's great. Um, they went ahead and they actually had the children function. So they declared the function at the top. Here's the child function, here's the parent function. Cool. So here, um, they defaulted num child to two, just so there's a default value. That's sort of a nice thing. The important part here is they said, hey, if the number of args, because remember, you're getting two parameters in. You're getting in uh, int arg c, which is the number of arguments, and then the pointer pointer, so this is the uh, list of actual arguments, right? So what we can do is we can, number one, this person check is the number of arguments equal to three. And again, if you've got the command line that looks like um, a dot uh, out minus three, Seven. So that's going to be R zero. That's going to be R one. That's going to be R two. So we're going to have three arguments: our number, our dash p, and our this. Um, so here, he's checking. Well, number one, did I get the right number of arguments? And number two was the uh, the second argument, arg sub one, equal to dash p. Again, that wasn't a requirement, but it was a nice error check. If they didn't, um, they go ahead and say, hey, that's not how you use this. It should be R0, you know, fourth process or whatever, eight or out, dash P and a number. If they did, then let's go ahead and take that uh, last argument, the R2, <clears throat> use that uh, string to integer, convert it, and put it into numchildren. So any questions on this? So that was uh, how do you how do you get arguments in and use them and double check? Them? All right. <clears throat> Next thing. Um, so how do you go ahead and create the child array? Well, I mean you could just go ahead and have uh, you know child array sub uh, num child. If you do num child, it not only just I mean otherwise you can just have the memory out, out allocated out there. And you know, here's the array, and part of it is, if we do in Java, int 
um, 10 and put it into um, array A, then yeah, we know here's the array and it's gonna have 10 spots to it, right? Because we know how big these are. But A itself is just, that's here and that's gonna point over to this area because this is gonna be our stack and that's gonna be on our heap. Well, if we just allocate the stack, we just allocate the, the amount of memory we need for that pointer, but we don't allocate the heap, then we haven't done the whole process, right? So you really need to do both. And if you really want to be good, you can go ahead and also zero these things out, okay? So this is usually a malloc, and if you actually want to zero them out, you use calc, okay? Um, anyways, so over here, he's not only setting this up, but he's also doing the new. And that's gonna go ahead and allocate um, this point over here, or that uh, amount of memory over here. So then, we can go ahead and do our fork here. So here, we start off, we're doing for i equals number of children, and that's the seven or whatever I typed in. And it's going ahead and doing the fork. Now, if we did not have the if equal equals zero, then what's going to happen? The first time two is going to fork twice, and the second time both of those are going to fork, and the next time both of those are going to fork, and we're going to have a whole bunch of them, right? That was the whole deal of we need to make sure the parent is the only one uh, forking on processes. So here, if the child is zero, zero, I mean, uh, if the ID that we got back from the fork is equal to zero, then we want to go ahead and number one, we're going to call the child function, and here's the important part, and we're going to exit, okay? So what happens is it forks, and if you're a child, as soon as you're done <coughs> with the child process, you exit, this process dies. It never goes back up to the for loop and runs it again, right? So the only time you're ever gonna go back up to the for loop is if the uh, process ID is greater than zero. So basically, you're only spawning on the parent. There are other ways to do that. Um, exit is sort of a harsh thing, but it certainly works. So here, um, if we're going to do a child, I mean, if, if it's equal to zero, we're going to do the child process. We sit down here to the child process. So here it says, okay, um, I got my index coming in, so I know I'm the first, second, nth child. We're going to go ahead and do for our loop is one to ten. Output. I'm going to get my PID. I'm going to get my number. Hey, okay, so I'm PID one two three four five. I'm counter number two, and boom, I uh, send that to the output. So then I pop back up and I exit. So that gets me all of one, two, three, four, five, I mean, uh, all one through 10 on child ID X. Well, on the parent process, then we can go ahead and do parent things, right? So we look at the parent function, and the parent function says, well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna wait, because I need for all the children to finish, and then I'll do my parent thing of saying, hey, Here's the um, child number this, child, you know, child number one, child number two, child number three, there's our PIDs. We're gonna send them out to the output, and then boom, we're done. Uh, but this was the important step here is the, the wait. You gotta wait until the rest is done. And then, after that parent process is done, now we have to free up our memory. Because we're done with our child ID array, the array of all the PIDs, and since we allocate, we got to free it up, and then, uh, and then we're done. Okay, delete, output in the program, return zero. So any questions on this? This was an excellent example, except for one thing. Look at our child function. What's the comment on the child function? Ah, this is child function. It's like, yeah, I can see that from the next line. So, 
this was the one point that got taken off on this one. Otherwise, it was an awesome program. Uh, again, sorry for not asking ahead of time if I could use it. All right, so that's the program. Any questions on program one? Homework one? All right. Homework two is due like in a day or two, and that seems a little unreasonable. So I've gone ahead and bumped it back a little bit. But we also have um, our uh, project one that needs to be done pretty soon too. So let's go ahead and look at those guys. So if we go back to here. All right, now that you know how to create children, you know, you can do the fork process, you can have multiple things going, everything's cool, you know, how to determine whether you're a parent or if you're a child, put in those little parameters, you know, or those little checks to say if PID is greater than zero, then what we want to do is Let's go ahead and communicate between the two processes. I mean, it's great if you can just go off and do your own thing, but a lot of times you have to have process one communicating with process two and back and forth, right? So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a pipe connected between the two, and then what's gonna happen is the parent is gonna read from the input file. Um, the parent is then gonna pass to the child um, basically a line from the input file. And the input file itself, probably be useful if I should do that. Um, here, is going to be this. It's going to be a three-digit <coughs> operand, okay? So like division, and then two or more parameters. So like here, um, we've got div 894 divided by 866. So I simply want to divide 8.94 by negative 866. Or I want to go ahead and multiply negative 1.51 times 1.43. Now up here, you know, if you've got multiple things, then you divide this one by this one, some of this divided by this one, some of this divided by this one. So all it is is it's a calculator, right? So the main process is going to say, hey, I want you to do this, and hey, I want you to do this, and it's going to come back with the number. So there's going to be two-way communication. The parent's going to tell the child, I want you to calculate this value, the child's going to respond back with the answer. All right, so let's go with this. All right, so the parent is going to read from the input file. Um, it's going to pass that information to the child. Uh, when it's done, it's going to wait. It's going to receive a response from the child for each answer. And then the parent's going to go ahead and print out the results. All right, so we've got a parent that's doing a lot of waiting, right? You know, it's, it's sort of I.O. bound, because it's printing out, it's reading in, it's printing out, it's reading in, it's printing out. So it's the one that's I.O. bound, and the child process should be the speedy one, right? It's gonna be the one that is um, uh, doing the calculations and popping the answer like that. Which, by the way, a couple of y'all made comments, and I'll keep that in a second, um, about not having had C++ before, I didn't realize y'all hadn't had C++. I thought for sure you would have gotten at least a little bit in uh, uh, 2314, or maybe the networks class, or et cetera. So to help mitigate that a little bit, I went ahead and shared um, this over here, and maximize it. And if we actually go back to the The content. There is now a. Uh, I guess I did it in. Uh, if you go to C plus plus help and you download that zip, it's got about eight or ten different examples of how do you do pointers, how do you do um, allocation of uh, arrays, how do you get stuff from arguments, how do you do this, that, and the other. It's even got a. Um, uh, come on. I'm
probably hard to read, but in any case, it's got how do you do functions, how do you do output, how do you do scanning input, how do you uh, pointers, how do you do a hello world, file I.O., command lines. Um, there's actually a tutorial, a PowerPoint tutorial, and a Adobe Acrobat. Um, so hopefully that will help. In the future, if you're banging your head against the wall because I've asked you to do something and you don't understand, ask me. I mean, I could have given this to you all two weeks ago if I had realized you didn't have C++ knowledge. Um, I mean, I've been doing C++ for 30 years. I assume everybody knew it. Sorry. <laughs> um, but literally, if you start running into problems, you know, you don't know, I, I can't do this weight thing. I don't understand it. Send me an email. Come see me in office hours. Um, maybe you can go talk to somebody in the art. Now, one person went and Googled and figured out how to allocate memory. Is that cheating? Okay. If you're writing an English paper and you copy some of these stuff and don't attribute it, is that plagiarism? Yes. Okay. If you copy some of these stuff and you put a big asterisk there and put a footnote and a reference and all this, is that invalid? Or is it properly cited? Okay. Partially properly, properly cited. Literally, somebody in their code said, hey, I couldn't figure out how to do this. I went to Google. This is where I went. Absolutely fine. I have absolutely no problem with that. When you get out in the real world, you can sit there and you can tell your boss, well, this was a one-week project, but I spent three weeks on it because I was patting my head against the wall and I couldn't figure it out. I finally figured it out, but it took me three weeks. And he's going to go, I googled it in two minutes. Just cut, copy, and paste. Okay. Uh, efficiency is really, really important. Count the real world. Now, do you have to give them credit? Yeah. Because otherwise, they'll sue you. Literally, the company I work for, in a graph, they sued Intel because they had a copyright infringement, a patent infringement. And they won, and they got like $240 million settlement. So don't copy code without, you know, especially copyright code, without um, you know, doing the proper steps. But there's so much code out there that is freeware, that is you know, open source, that is out there. Don't really use it. Just document it, right? Now, at this point, I don't want you to just go out and take the whole program, because you haven't learned anything. But if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you've been pounding your head for two hours, and you want to go out and figure out one little line of how do I allocate an array? Absolutely, go use your resources. Go look it up. As a matter of fact, one of the places that's pretty good, to CPP reference, um, it's actually not a bad uh, CPP, CPP reference.com. It's a pretty decent um, source. And for this next program, we're going to be doing a lot of file stuff on the project. Um, so this is a really good place to look for, well, how do I do um, um, you know, how do I do things like uh, get the current file path? or change path, you know, there's current path, or, you know, does the file exist, um, or what are the permissions on the file? So I would definitely recommend using this or any other reference while you're trying to look up some of the C++ stuff to do on, uh, on the next one. Okay, so anyways, we were looking at homework two, and homework two is so basically, um, so I'm going to print out the results, Child process is going to receive the um, the you know gives and adds and subtracts. It's going to figure out what it is. It's going to send it back, um, and you're good to go. Here's what the file is going to look like. Here's how you, you know, how you do the order. Well, it's going to be you know, the first one left justified. 
Uh, so. Now, there is an example that shows you how to do pipes and shows you how to set up the buffer. And so your buffer zero is the reading and the buffer one is the writing. Um, and so let me do one last thing, and that is project part one. Um, oh, the homework. Um, you'll have to look at the date. I think I said it for like a week from now. Um, the home project one, I've been told, I've already gotten one submission, said it took like four hours to do, it wasn't too bad. Basically, um, we're going to set up a, a file system um, since we just finished the file system stuff. So some of the things you have to do are you have to be able to delete a file, read a file, maybe uh, make a directory, um, change directories, find out what the current directory is, and list everything in the file. So basically you're going to have a loose shell that's going to take one of seven commands, you know, quit, set uh, current directory, change directories, etc. Um, for this first one, just go ahead and use whatever directory you're in. Okay, so if you're in C temp edit, then that's the current uh, directory. If you do a CD, um, if you do a change directory one up using absolute paths, I'm sorry, can't do one. If you give an absolute path of C colon slash temp slash Fred, then actually use the system call that we just showed you the CPP reference to change down to um, C slash temp slash Fred. But anyways, so this one shouldn't take very long. The other one, again, you have samples out there. If you have questions, uh, feel free to talk to me about it. Otherwise, um, good job on the test. Good job on the homework.